Hello, my name is Mira Bhatt and I'm a junior at Montgomery High School in New Jersey. As I started thinking about what I wanted to major in in college and what my career should be, truthfully, I felt very lost. In talking with family and friends, I also realized that so many others are in the same boat as me. Sometimes speaking with guidance counselors or searching the internet endlessly or other options seemed to be more confusing and sometimes even created more chaos. So that's when I realized there has to be a better way to do this and a better way to bring about clarity about colleges and careers. So that brings us to this session. I hope this interview sheds some light and brings a real life perspective where you will learn with me as I interview people who are established professionals in their careers and from a wide range of careers and professions. And through these interviews, I hope we receive a holistic understanding of a few careers and many different pathways to success. So today I'm so excited and deeply honored to speak with and learn from Dr. Sadaf Jaffer. She earned her bachelor's degree in foreign science, so sorry, foreign service from Georgetown University and obtained her PhD in Near Eastern Languages and Civilizations from Harvard University with a secondary field in studies of women, gender, and sexuality. Dr. Jaffer is the first South Asian woman to serve as a mayor of a municipality in New Jersey and the first Muslim woman to serve as mayor of a municipality in the United States. Currently, she is a postdoctoral research associate in South Asian studies at Princeton University where she teaches many courses and a candidate for the New Jersey General Assembly in District 16. Welcome Dr. Jaffer, it's an honor to speak with you. Good to be here. Okay, so I want to get started by, um, like I mentioned, your university experience. I would like to start by if you could tell us um, what you studied in college and what your experience was and how you kind of knew that you wanted to go into that. Sure. So like a lot of young people, I had lots of different passions and things that I was interested in um, growing up and definitely in high school. And um, I didn't really know much about different colleges in the US. Uh, neither of my parents had gone to um, schooling in the US. So I was just doing research myself. And I um, happened to come across this uh, school of foreign service at Georgetown University. And that really seemed to me like a dream uh, place to go. I being the child of immigrants and learning about lots of different cultures just by default growing up, I had started to think about diplomacy and um, you know international affairs as something that I might want to go into and something that I might want to study. So I definitely was looking at different schools that had like international politics or other fields of that nature. And so that's how I decided to apply to Georgetown and um, you know, it was a very hard decision to decide where to go to college, but I had a very good experience there. And actually, you know, during my time at Georgetown, I really enjoyed my courses on history and literature of Muslim societies. And that's kind of what got me to think about doing a PhD in the field. And actually after college, I went to India for two years to study uh, language in Lucknow. I studied Urdu and then I did my PhD after that. So, you know, I, I think I always had an interest in literature and the arts. Actually in high school, I was the editor of my high school's literary magazine and I always used to do theater and things like that. So um, literature and the arts was always important too. So a mixture of studying different cultures and trying to understand them through the arts really motivated me. Um, but then I think uh, public service was always an interest as well. So I interned at the State Department when I was in college and I also interned with the Marine Corps in their cultural education center. But then I went on to do a PhD and actually when I um, ended up in Princeton, or run the, in the Princeton area, but in Montgomery, because both of my both my husband and myself teach at Princeton University. Then I started getting involved in local politics, and it's not something that I really knew about before. I always was focused more on international affairs, but um, I found a different way to get involved in public service, and so I started getting involved locally. Ran for local government, got on the township committee, then got to serve as mayor for two terms, and. 
now uh, deciding to run for state assembly. So that's kind of a short summary of, of the different things I was interested in studying and how I ended up in academia and politics. Right. So that's really interesting how you're kind of a pro we're, we're all kind of a product of our surroundings. And like you said, you're de by default interested in these cultures and everything. So that's how your, your journey kind of evolved. And it's so wonderful to hear how um, your career has uh, has taken shape. Um, and so what you what you studied in university kind of evolved into you um, now working, obviously, in academia, as you mentioned, and also public service. and um, I think there's many ways that people decide to do that, but the way that you're channeling what you want to do is also wonderful. So um, did you always anticipate doing what you do in terms of teaching and um, working in government now, or did, was there a different idea of what you originally wanted to do? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I went through many phases uh, when I was younger, you know, I wanted to be an architect, I wanted to be um, you know, lots of different things. But then, yeah, as I mentioned, by the time I got to college, I did think I wanted to go into diplomacy and international international affairs. And um, I think I didn't really know anything about academia. Uh, no one in my family is an academic. No one has a PhD. Mm -hmm. And so it was actually one of my professors who said, uh, you should think about doing a PhD. And my response was, well, I don't really... I have to get a job. Like, I don't think I can do more schooling. Um, and that's actually when I learned that most PhD programs in the United States are funded. And um, like, I had no idea how the whole system worked. So my professors were really helpful. And then I did a program at UCLA called the Summer Programs for Undergraduate Research, where they really taught us a lot about how to apply for PhD programs and doing independent research projects. Um, and then I ended up doing a, a senior thesis, a senior honor, honors thesis, and then kind of just Googled Urdu language programs on a whim um, because I had studied Arabic in college, but they didn't offer uh, any South Asian languages when I was at Georgetown. So. Um, and then I happened to find one that was accepting applications and decided to apply for it. And obviously spending two years in India really had a huge impact on my life and provided me with a lot of uh, skills in order to apply for a PhD program. Um, so I definitely, I don't think I knew anything about academia. I don't think I ever thought about being a professor when I was in high school or younger. It's really something that I learned about in college. And similarly, local government, I don't know if it was really something that I thought about too much. Uh, I grew up in Chicago and in high school, I was part of a program called Future Leaders of Chicago. And they did take us to like city council meetings and um, introduce us to different leaders in the city. Uh, but I, I think, I don't think I ever really thought about running for office necessarily that I remember. Um, but as I, but the interest in the arts and literature has always been there and an interest in public service. And I think like those general themes were there. I don't think I just really knew how it was going to, they were going to manifest themselves. Right. So then you just channel those into where you are today. That's wonderful. Um, so how do you re recommend young people who are interested in politics and government and arts and literature channel and nurture those interests further, especially when we're in high school? What are some opportunities that you think they have? Uh, well, I mean, I think a lot of your clubs and activities in, in school can really help. So definitely, you know, get involved in if you're interested in the arts and literature in the music program, in the theater program, in um, in literary magazines or other sorts of artistic expression in school. Um, in terms of politics, I actually, I never did model UN or anything like that, either in high school or in college. I know a lot of people who did, um, but definitely you can work and work for campaigns and candidates or find an advocacy organization if there's an issue that you really care about that you can start volunteering for or working for i think that that's a really good way to get exposure and kind of understand how the system works um 
and talk to people who are doing what you want to do. I've always done that because they're the ones who know how what path it takes to get there mm -hmm. and they can give you the best advice. Whereas people who are outside the field, it's really hard for them to necessarily know how it works because every field of work is different. Yeah. Um, and then I would say, but then I would also say, like, take anything that anyone says with a grain of salt, because people usually complain about their field mm -hmm. and they say, oh, you know, being a lawyer is terrible for X, Y, Z reason. Being a doctor is terrible for, you know, X, Y, Z reason. Being in politics is terrible for X, Y, Z reason. But every every field has its pitfalls and its strengths. Um, so you kind of have to just be realistic about your expectations from any line of work. Right. OK, that's really valuable. Thank you. Um, so as a South Asian, personally, I feel like this path is quite unconventional, your path. Um, and it's definitely not the norm, but I think that as, as time evolves, um, it's becoming more accepted. But um, in, in terms of not necessarily having figures um, like, like yourself seen in the positions that you've held, how did you um, kind of manifest see, or see yourself in these positions? And, and what did your idea of a career in this field look like as someone who didn't necessarily have um, someone to look up to like yourself? Yeah, well, I think I've just always been very stubborn. And so when my parents were like, you need to go into medicine, I just was like, no, not doing it. <laughs> um, and then I said, well, I'll be a doctor of philosophy. I'll have my PhD and still say I'm a doctor if you want. Um, so <laughs> I found my little ways around things. Um, but I, I would say that you do find people who are similar in some way. So I definitely have always benefited from the mentorship of women in academia, for example, mm -hmm. um, as, and, and in politics. So one of the first things I did in terms of getting involved in politics was that I did a program called Emerge, which is for women from the Democratic Party who are interested in running for office. And that's where I learned the nitty gritty because I, before that I'd only campaigned for President Obama as like a, the average run of the mill political Act, um, activist or political volunteer. I didn't have any sort of a leadership role or anything in that campaign. Um, so that's how I learned. And so my network of women elected officials has always been really important to me of, you know, women in academia. And then if there isn't an, if there isn't an official group, make one. Uh, so I was facing some issues and there were some South Asian American women who were in politics when I was first running for office and I reached out to them and we created this sort of informal group that would meet for brunch and just discuss the issues that we were facing. And then we formalized it into an organization called I Saw Inspiring South Asian American Women. So there's always opportunities. You might not know who's out there, but there are people out there who are probably doing things similar to you are. Um, and I think I really didn't anticipate when I was running that I would be the first South Asian woman mayor or the first Muslim woman. It wasn't on my radar. I was just focused very much on local issues. Mm -hmm. But, you know, once you realize that it's even more important that we build each other up and that we create pathways for other people to get into these fields. Um, so I think you, you find people who you can connect with in some, in one way or another. And it is super helpful to find that network of support. Right, I think that um, point about um, networking and finding people who are similar to you and seeking that out is really valuable and something that you know everyone can can take away. Um, so now I want to bring it kind of a little bit back more uh, to general questions. So if you had to go through the college admissions or kind of career deciding process again, um, would you do anything differently? And if so, why or what? I think that I would, as I said, I would take uh, people's comments about their own fields with a little bit more of a grain of salt. So actually I did a program when I was in high school uh, called the National Youth Leadership Forum on Medicine. Mm 
where I went to UCLA for a program and we met with doctors and we did like case studies and different things. And I got so scared off because of all the horrible things I heard about going into medicine. That was part of the reason I didn't go into medicine. And then similarly, I went to a panel at Georgetown about going to law school and they had so many complaints about going to law school that I just was like, oh no, that doesn't sound like it's for me. Um, so, and then I did the same thing with the foreign service. I entered at the state department and people had so many complaints about it that I just kind of got scared off. And then eventually I realized that every field has its, you know, upsides and downsides. Mm -hmm. So maybe think about a few and talk to people from a few different fields and think about what your priorities are. Like, is it more important for you to have a flexible work schedule or is it more important for you to be able to make a lot of money or is it more important for you um, to be, to have like intellectual freedom or to work for yourself? Or is it more important for you to be affiliated with a strong institution um, that you can fall back on? So everybody has different priorities. Um, and then actually I did a lot of career assessments after I did my PhD. Uh, so I did this one called Strengths Quest uh, that's by Gallup. And I love that one. I feel like I learned so much about myself doing that. Um, and it ha has helped me figure out what to do after my PhD. So I think all those assessments and, and ways to understand yourself better are great to do and to kind of refresh from time to time. Um, and you know, I would say like, there's no perfect answer. Any one of us could do lots of different things. It's not like we are destined to do one thing or another. Um, so like, don't put so much pressure on yourself and you don't have to have it all figured out now. You could go in one direction and then figure out that, oh, really, there's really something else that you want to do. Um, but I would de definitely say like, put yourself out there. And uh, I remember when I was in high school, I was kind of shy uh, the first couple of years. And uh, one of my high school teachers had me read this book called The Seven Principles, no, The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. Yeah. Um, and one of the, one of the you know, principles was to be proactive. And so I, it wasn't really my nature to apply for that Future Leaders of Chicago program or to you know, put my name in to become editor of the literary magazine. But because I read that and because of encouragement from him where he was like, you should do this, you should try it. Um, I did those two things and I feel like they totally took my life in a different direction. And as I said, you know, I, I applied for this fellowship to go to India and, you know, just putting yourself out there a lot of half the time or more, it won't work out, right? You're not going to get everything you apply for, right. but you just let you just forget the ones you didn't get and keep and remember the ones that you did, even if you only get one in 10 things that you apply for, you've, you've had some different doors open to you and some different opportunities. So that's what I would advise people. Wow, that's a lot of great advice. Thank you. Um, so I know I've done a few of these interviews, as I mentioned, and a lot of people when I ask them, um, what are like emerging fields or hot areas that you see in the next five to 10 years, say like AI or big data or the biome and stuff like that. Um, but do you have any others that you think are just like areas of interest um, because of, of their, I don't know, uh, popularity and, and the way the world is going? What do you think that are some hot uh, areas well, I would definitely say like municipal government's not going anywhere. <laughs> we need we need people who are both elected officials, but we also need professionals like township administrators and finance op officers for townships and you know planners and all of the other engineers who work for for local governments or state governments. So I think you know government is definitely a, a field to look into, whatever it is that you're interested in. The other thing I would say is definitely healthcare. It doesn't have to be that you become a doctor, but we're human beings and we are definitely vulnerable and all of us get sick in various ways at various times in our lives. So the medical field's also not going anywhere. Um, and there's lots of different emerging fields from within it. Right. Um, but, you know, I would say like, do something you'd like because these things change. Like if you, if you pitch your entire career because you heard that this is the field, what if it doesn't become the field? Then that would be really sad. And I would say even within academia, 
uh, there are definitely trends or fads in terms of what's in, in fashion to study. Mm -hmm. And I never really fell into that because I just wanted to study what I thought was interesting. Mm -hmm. And it worked out for me that what I thought was interesting ended up becoming more of interest to more people over time. And that way I, I have no regrets about spending my time focusing on X, Y, Z. So, you know, I would say definitely look at what's emerging, but also realize that that could very much very well change okay so we've covered thank you so much for that and um we we've covered a lot of ground today on the topics of colleges and careers and through your journey i think i've learned a lot um but is there any advice that you haven't mentioned yet that you'd like to leave us with i would say you know your career is a part of your life it's not your life your life is beyond your career and uh you know you may have heard or you may hear that doing a PhD is very grueling and it's very exhausting. And I had my low points where I felt like this, I don't know if I can do this and this is really difficult. And I realized that my whole sense of identity was tied to my work. And I had to step back from that and realize like, I have many, many identities. I'm a daughter, I'm a sister, I'm a friend. I'm a wife, I'm a mother, and, um, and, and I'm a worker, I'm a professional. And if things in my professional life are kind of not so great, that's okay, because I can be doing really, really well in all these other parts of my life. Um, and I'm just a person who's trying to live a meaningful life. So I would say, you know, trying to be educated about your career is important, but there's more to having a meaningful life than having your whole identity wrapped up in your career and that we have our jobs so that we can live our lives. Our jobs are not our lives. So, um, you know, don't don't put so much pressure on yourself, I would say, you know, like try to do something that's meaningful that you enjoy, um, that you're good at, that fits with your skills, but also, you know, make space for part of your life that's not your work. Oh, that's really amazing. I, I need to like frame that. <laughs> um, well, thank you so much for meeting with me today and for talking to us today about colleges and careers and your journey is like super inspiring um, and inspirational for, for me to see, especially as a fellow South Asian female and you as an in government and especially because you be began as our mayor here in Montgomery. So I can't wait to see where your journey uh, takes you. I'm rooting for you. And thank you so much for being on here today. Thank you for having me.